Believe it or not, publishing a book is now easier than ever. With accessible publishing platforms like Amazon Publishing, anyone can get their first book out there. And that's exactly what my sisters and I did. We created our first book, Donde Esta La Teta, a charming and humorous children's bilingual book about a baby in search of La Teta, aka the booby. <laughs> this book was written by my sister Nubia, illustrated by myself, and edited by my sister Myra. It was a fun, challenging, but most of all rewarding experience. And I'll share exactly how we did it, as well as any pitfalls that you should avoid. The first step to any great book is a great idea. This is also the hardest part, of course. If you've been thinking about creating the book for a while, you might already know what this is, but if you don't, you'll wanna spend time thinking about these two questions. What can you talk about for hours? And what is missing in the world? Thinking about these questions will hopefully spark an idea of what you're passionate about, as well as what unique view you bring to the world. In the case of our published book, Nubia was really the mastermind of this. She approached me and Myra with a clear mission. This country is in need of more bilingual books. As all of us being children of Mexican immigrants, we all really resonated with the issue of lack of representation in children's books and why this is important. We also did some research that validated this idea only 6% of children's books have a Latino main character, and only around 2% of these books are written by Latino authors. You might also want to do a bit of research in your idea or your interest area to validate your idea and to see if there's any ways that you can approach it to successfully address the issue. Once you feel you have a solid idea, share it with two people who you trust and who are honest, just as Nubia did. Sharing your idea with a couple of people before writing it is critical in that it'll help you validate your idea or help you reposition it in a better way. Once you have your idea, you'll want to write it out. My sister Nubia completely owned this section and as a talented writer, she pumped it out in no time. She wrote her draft in a Google Doc where it later became really easy for our skilled editor, Myra, to go in and make comments and questions. For picture books, the other core component, of course, are the drawings themselves, but you don't wanna just jump right into drawing just yet, even if the writing feels complete and ready to go. Always start first with a prototype. A prototype is basically like a sample of what will later be your final product. Prototypes are helpful because they help you plan out, visualize, and test out your outcome. This way you can get an idea of what your book is gonna look like so that you can collect feedback and make major changes without having to go through the entire time-consuming process of illustrating. With our book, we created this prototype and created some super messy sketches to test out the concepts. And when I say messy, we mean messy. <laughs> At this stage, it's really not important to worry about styles or how perfect or accurate your drawings are. You're really just testing out the concept with the writing and getting an idea of how the story flows with pictures and if the concepts of those pictures make sense with what's going on. To me, this is the most exciting part of the process. You'll test your prototype with others to get feedback that will drastically improve your project. So how does one effectively test their prototype? Well, there's really just one thing you really need to keep in mind. Ask open-ended questions. At a high level, questions can be placed into two main categories, closed-ended questions and open-ended questions. Closed-ended questions have predetermined answers and often result in a yes or no answer. Open-ended questions, on the other hand, require more than just a short, fixed response. They require the respondent to elaborate more on their answers, and it leads to a lot more insightful feedback because of this. Here's an example of each. A close-ended question would be like, do you think the story is funny? To which the respondent can say, yeah or no. And it doesn't really give you any more feedback into how to improve your book or why it is that they responded that way. Instead, you could transform this close-ended question to an open-ended one by asking, what do you think about the story? To which someone could say a lot of different things and you're not limiting the possibilities of what they could tell you. Because with the first question, you're also assuming that they'll think it's funny at all or that the book is meant to be funny. With the open-ended question, they could talk about how they thought the story was funny. They could talk about how they thought it was scary or weird or confusing. If someone was answering this open-ended question, they could probably say, I thought it was very cute. 
I thought the characters were relatable, but I was really confused at the end when this happened. And then that provides an opportunity for you to probe and to dig deeper on that to understand why that was. So with open-ended questions, it places your audience in the driver's seat. It allows them to take you to places that you might not even notice or have discovered in your own book. After testing your prototype, you'll probably find that you'll need to add pages, remove pages, change your story up a bit, maybe even change the concept of your illustrations. And that's the power of prototyping. Without having put all of this time into something like this, you can get immediate feedback and figure out how to make your book better from the start. This phase of the project was where Maya really shined. She reviewed our prototype, asked great questions, noticed inconsistencies, and found many areas of the book that could be stronger. Overall, she helped Nivia and I see things that we were completely blind to. However, looking back at this, we made one critical error that every creator should avoid, and that's that we decided to only prototype once. These four steps really should be an iterative process process where you're constantly looping through them, going back to the beginning, making changes, rewriting, redrawing, rebuilding your prototype until your book is as refined as possible without getting into high quality illustration. Because we didn't do this, we found ourselves making edits when I was already into high quality illustrations, which wasn't the worst thing in the world, but definitely was very time consuming. You'll save yourself some time and also improve the quality of your book by running through these steps multiple times. How many? It's kind of hard to say. Honestly, you kind of just have to leave it to the vibe, for lack of a better term. You have to kind of sense it out. If you go through it a couple times and then on the third time you see that you all really don't have any more edits for it, then that's probably a good sign you can move forward. But if you keep finding edits to uncover, it's definitely a good idea to keep going through the process until you don't have any more edits or changes to make. Once you have a prototype that passed the testing stage, it's now time to illustrate. If you're the illustrator, this is of course the most exciting part of the project because you finally get to bring these great ideas to life. I was the illustrator in this project and so this was the workflow that I followed. First thing was character design. I created several sketches of what our baby character could look like and these honestly didn't start out so great but they got progressively better the more that I worked on them. I asked others for feedback as well as looked for examples online to help me really refine this character. Secondly, I focused on the color palette. When creating this color palette, I kept a lot of things in mind. One, I wanted it to evoke the fun and playful nature so of course I used a lot of bright colors in this. I also wanted it to embody a bit of Mexican culture and so I looked to Mexican color palettes to really inspire that. If you're a bit uncomfortable with colors and don't know where to start, I recommend going to a bookstore and actually looking at some finished books firsthand. If you look at these books, really analyze them, see what colors they're using and what emotions that evokes for you, you can get a better idea of maybe what colors you need to use for your book. You can also read up on color theory online or use tools like Adobe Color to get a sense of how certain colors look together. After establishing the color palette, I then moved on to sketching. For sketching, I started off with a high quality sketch for each page, presented that to my sisters, and then filled it in with color. However, while this worked for us, I recommend you do something different. Instead of going page by page and finalizing it with color, I recommend sketching all of your pages first, just high quality sketches, no color, and then reviewing that with your team. It provides another opportunity for feedback, and if there are any needed changes that you need to make, you will have saved yourself a ton of time by not adding in color. Once we had our completed drawings, we pieced together everything in InDesign. This was by far the most easy part of the process since it really just involved dragging in the illustrations and then adding text. Before even piecing together things, you'll definitely want to double check with where you plan to publish this. So if it's for Amazon Publishing, you'll want to go to their site and see the specifications for certain sizes so that you can size your PDF accordingly in InDesign. And in a nutshell, that's how we did it. Of course, it took some time and focus, but it really can be that simple when you set out goal and then make slow progress towards it. If you've always dreamed of creating or illustrating a book, I hope this proved that it's more than possible. If you're interested in getting more immersed into the book world, I highly recommend you follow my sister, Nubia. She has a TikTok and an Instagram where she features content on children's bilingual books. She makes amazing videos and is incredibly talented, so definitely go follow her. If you need a gift for a child, a parent, or a parent-to-be, you can purchase Donde Salateta in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.